In the name of the living God, who is blessed Trinity, amen. In late March 1945, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was exhausted. The previous month in February, he had went to Yalta for the famous conference with him, Winston Churchill, Joseph Stalin, where they began planning out what life might look like after World War II was finished. He returned home and was physically spent, and what many at the time didn't know was that his health was rapidly declining. So on March 29th, he left Washington to set out for a place that had always been for many years, somewhere where he could get away and be rejuvenated. It was his beloved place in Warm Springs, Georgia. He went there and began resting and preparing for what the end of April was supposed to hold, the inaugural convention of the United Nations. So he began resting, and some accounts were that for the first few days, it looked like he was regaining some strength. Resting, preparing, still meeting for people, and on April the 12th, he wakes up a day much like the previous ones have been. He went about, had breakfast, was sitting that day for a portrait to be made of him, had lunch, and sometime in the afternoon, accounts say he was sitting at a desk, and in a voice so soft that only those right around him could hear, says, I have a terrific headache. And at that moment, he lost unconsciousness, and a few hours later died. For many at that time, those fighting in World War II, and for probably a whole generation in the United States, he was the only sense or picture of president that anybody had. Literally, he had been in that job longer than anybody had. And if you wanted to know, how do you define what a president is for many, it was look at Franklin Roosevelt. I mean, he was from a a wealthy family from Hyde Park, New York. His voice just seemed to capture what, I guess, a president is supposed to sound like. Just made you feel that that's how you define someone like that. But at that moment, a few hours after his death, Harry Truman was sworn in as president, and there couldn't have been a starker difference between these two people. If FDR was from a wealthy family in New York, Harry Truman was from a farm family in Independence, Missouri. Growing growing up on the farm, several ideas and businesses that didn't work out. But the picture of what a president is not supposed to be like is now there. What happens? When we're in a place, when we're looking at somebody and they don't fit the picture we have in our mind. Today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday on the church calendar. Next Sunday uh, is the first Sunday of Advent, so come back and we're going to celebrate New Year's next Sunday as we begin yet another church year. But on Christ the King Sunday, I want to raise up for us to reflect upon that when we look at Luke's 23rd chapter, and really all through the gospel, that Jesus hardly fits the picture then and maybe even now of what we might think a king should look like. When we encounter Jesus in Luke 23, he's hanging on the cross. He's at the almost very end of his life. He's hanging on the cross. It's a Roman attempt to shame and humiliate those deemed that should be on the cross. It's to hold up, say, this is what happens when you do 
what you did. And it's supposed to frighten and scare people. But through Luke's account on three different, three different people, hey, Jesus is innocent. Pilate and Herod said, we don't find any reason why he should be crucified. And then even the centurion, one of the guards, claims he is innocent. Yet Jesus still hangs there. Listening as we did to the gospel lesson, the religious leaders scoffed at Jesus. The soldiers mocked Jesus. One of the criminals derided at Jesus. Yet Jesus stayed there. The God of the universe is being shamed, and yet he's innocent. And we get details that we should, as many years as we've lived with these stories, see the irony in it. What those trying to deride at Jesus are saying is actually truthful statements. Where the leaders say, he's the Messiah, the Son of God. The sign is put up that says, Jesus King of the Jews. Those were meant to make fun of Jesus, and yet we uphold them as truthful. Jesus is innocent, yet he stayed. And our salvation is not in spite of the cross, but it's through the cross. And perhaps one of the surprising moments in our gospel lesson is the other criminal who is affirming that it's right that he and the other are on the cross for what they did. Somehow, we don't know how this happens, but he catches a glimpse of Jesus that no one else sees. And all he can do is beg for mercy. Jesus, remember me. And Jesus said this very day, You will be in paradise. You are welcomed in. As we reflect on this day, I'd like us all to imagine holding a mirror up to ourselves, every one of us, and looking at a mirror to see our reflections. But don't hold the mirror up to yourself. Don't hold the mirror up to me. But hold the mirror up and look at Jesus. And when you see the reflection of Jesus, what do you see in your own life? Because in this gospel lesson, if there was ever somebody that lived and was at the margins of the story, it's this criminal. And Jesus says on this very day, not get down and go do a lot of good things and come back. But on this very day, though you have nothing to offer, on this very day, you will be with me. Jesus is the kind of king that went to the margins and said, you all are beloved. The look at every single one of us and those that he encountered and said, you are beloved by God. Jesus did not keep people at the margins to hold up the image of Jesus. Live into the Gospels. We will probably find a king that we're not always very comfortable with. And I say thank God for that. Because in the cross of Jesus we find life. Those we serve in Jesus' name. Those that we will be serving in a few moments. When we serve each other. We will think of why we need to do this. We've been blessed with a lot of stuff to share. But we need to open ourselves up to others and those outside of our walls because it's in each other that we see Jesus. So we need to serve the least, the last, and the lost because we need to see Jesus. I need to walk alongside of you and help and have you help me in my life because I need to see Jesus 
in you. That's why we serve. That's the king that we celebrate today. So be careful. We did it in our colic. Be careful affirming Jesus as king of kings. Not that Jesus isn't king of kings, but to make that kind of affirmation, to say that Jesus is the king of kings, that Jesus has my highest allegiance, then that means we measure ourselves by Jesus. And if we measure ourselves by Jesus, and we look into a mirror and we see the reflection of Jesus, be careful. Because on Christ the King Sunday on, and on any other day, Jesus is our measure of what a true king looks like.